Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my Paulonia trees that I planted from seed. Now these are hybrid Paulonia trees. I was never sure if they would be 100% true to type and I think what's happened is they're not actually the original cross with the hybrid. These are probably grown from the, the hybrid itself. So that what that means is normally when you have a hybrid plant you get two parent plants which aren't closely related cross them. They're normally different species they hybridize and then the seeds from that is the hybrid plant. I don't think the seeds are from those two parents, I think the seeds are from the hybrid plant itself. So there's a huge amount of variation in all my seedlings. So what I'm going to be doing is picking the ones that I think are the nicest characteristics and growing them in my garden. So this Paulonia is the best one that I've got so far. The leaves on this by far the largest out of any of them. You can see it's still not huge, it is only a first year plant and the climate here in North Scotland isn't ideal for them, it's a little bit cold in the summer. This variety is supposed to be high down to minus 33 so winter wise it should be absolutely fine for me but summer wise the summer temperatures are quite cool here, only about 18 degrees on average as the maximum high temperature in on most summer days in July so it's a bit cold for it, it likes it more kind of 25-30 degrees in the summer, more like a subtropical climate. These do best in warm temperate zones or cool subtropical zones. They can handle hard frost but they like a much warmer summertime. So this one's been doing well, let's say this is the only one I'm planting in the ground because it's the one I've been happiest with. This one grew much faster than all the other seedlings, it grew massive leaves. The leaves were even bigger than this but the largest leaves are actually falling off now. When this was growing in the conservatory it grew really really quickly and the leaves got incredibly large. I then put this outside, it got battered by the wind, most of the leaves were sh ripped to shreds and this is all the leaves that it's pretty much grown ever since it's been in the ground so it was about this high when it was put in the ground so you can see most of the height was grown in the conservatory once it got in the ground with the colder weather conditions it hasn't really grown a huge amount with the higher wind levels higher light levels and lower temperatures the leaves are much smaller now than what they were in the conservatory but as this had much bigger leaves than all the other seedlings i think this will have enormous leaves once i start coppicing it when it comes to paulonia trees when they're just grown normally they don't have massive leaves you just grow them um, without pruning them or anything. They might have large leaves when they're young and then they stop having the large leaves as they get older and they'll probably just be about this size, kind of hand sized. If you want giant leaves you need to pollard them, cut them down to the ground and allow them to re-sprout and that's when the giant leaves come. So I won't know the tr true um, size of these giant leaves until I do that. This will be a year or two once the root system is established. I can cut it down to the ground allow it to come back and then I'll have those enormous leaves. So I say this one's done the best, it's got really nice dark leaves, it's in the ground um, but I think one of the reasons that Paulonias do so well when they're pollarded is because they've got something called a lignorhizome. So some trees have this thing called a lignorhizome which is basically a, a swollen section at the base of the stem and that's a bit like a giant tuber. Uh, it's not exactly the same as a tuber in other plants, it's a lot woodier but it does a similar job. It stores basically carbohydrates and so if there's any damage to the tree you can use that to regrow very rapidly and that's what gives the paulonia the ability to grow so quick. So you can see that starting to form on this one and uh, if I clear the soil away a bit you can see there's a slight swelling there around the base of the trunk especially on the left there it's really starting to swell quite a bit but I'll show you this on some other ones and I'll actually take it out of the pot to give you a clearer view uh, but one of the advantages of a tuber is it has a lot of dormant buds so if the tree is damaged or burnt down to the ground it can re-sprout from the ground from that tuber. whereas a lot of trees if they cut right down at the base of the trunk they don't have any dormant buds waiting they'll just die off. tuber is more common in plants that are grown in, a, in, a, in an environment where there's a lot of fires so they can respond quickly from a fire and recolonize that site and so they don't get completely killed by the fire the root system will survive and re-sprout from that lignotuber. So these are most of my other uh, Paulonia trees I've been growing. I'm giving you the update now because we almost had a frost last night you can see the very heavy dew on the uh, on the leaves there it's looking white almost like frost but it is luckily not quite frost yet. So these will probably lose their leaves pretty soon um, there's also not much warning when it comes to autumn leaf drop in Paulonia trees as they are more of a subtropical plant. They don't really have that nice autumn colour. The leaves drop when they're still green. In fact you can see I think that cold temperature last night has caused a few of the leaves to, to drop off overnight. They stay green and they just drop off green. They sometimes go a little yellow but generally the frost comes they just drop all the leaves. So I'm giving you the update now whilst the leaves are still on the plant to show you how it's doing. Now as I was saying before I think these are quite variable in their genetics. They all look pretty different. Um, the one back there I showed you had by far the largest leaves. There's some that I've got at my parents, they've got really tiny leaves. 
and then there's some here as well the leaf shapes vary a lot so this one for example is much spikier than some of the other ones and um, this one has a lot more like little grooves in the teeth and the leaves tend to undulate a bit more other ones like this one here are much more rounded leaves so there's a lot of genetic variability in these trees which I would expect if it's grown from a hybrid plant and it's not the original hybrid cross and then what's really unusual is Paulonia trees normally take at least three or four years until they start flowering but these are just all grown from seed that was sown in February time and these are very young plants in March so these are only uh, first year seedlings really and um, they've already started to show flowers in some of them so as again most of them haven't there's only two that are starting to show flowers but uh, it shows the gen genetic variation of the plants again so this one here as you can see it's got several flower buds. Um, the flowering is a little bit unusual in Paulonia in that although these flower in spring, they actually grow the flower buds almost fully formed in autumn time. So that's the, what you can see here. And these flower buds will stay there all winter as long as the frost isn't too hard and kills off the flower buds. These will open up in spring and you'll get these lovely purple foxglove-like flowers in springtime. So it's very unusual uh, to see this flowering in its first year as it's such a young plant. Normally it needs to be a bit more mature. So I'll definitely be keeping this one. It might be useful as a small paulonia tree that's always flowering, uh, even from a young age. Whereas the other ones be more useful for maybe for pollarding and getting the giant leaf appearance. I'm really going for the giant leaf appearance in my tropical star garden, but I'll probably keep this one for its flowers and it'll be interesting to, to have that as like a small ornamental plant. So I'm gonna get one of them now and take apart the root system a little bit, just to show you better what the ligno tuber looks like. You can see in some of these um, where it's been clear slightly at the base, it's definitely a swelling there. But I'll get the, uh, the trowel out now, pull apart the root system and show you a bit more clearly what the lignotuber looks like. And as these are only one year old trees, they're quite young, and the lignotuber isn't that, that large yet. As these get older, the lignotuber will be much more defined. And if you do regularly pollard it, the lignotuber will get much, much bigger, especially in relation to the size of the tree. So you'll only have a, a maybe one or two meter trunk every year. But underground, you can have a really large, thick lignotuber, which just powers the plant. And when it does come to lignotubers, they tend to form between the, the seeds, leaves, and the roots. So if you're taking cuttings of paulonias, it's much less likely that you're gonna get a lignotuber. And so I would expect when you're pollarding a, a cutting grown uh, paulonia tree, you're not going to get as quite as rapid growth from pollarding as you would from a seed sown one. Now it's not going to make a huge difference but that's what I would expect because if it doesn't have a lignotuber and lignotubers tend to form best from seed grown plants you're not going to have such a big energy store for it to send up that rapid growth in spring when it's been pollarded. So with this paulonia tree what I've done is I've cleared off all the soil and I've rinsed the roots just to give you a much clearer idea of what the roots look like on a paulonia tree. Now there's just a couple of things to note. This was in a very small pot and got pot bound originally, which is why you got these kind of thicker roots twining around here and an initial root ball there. And then you got these much longer roots coming out of the bottom. That's when it was put in the larger pot. And that's where the new root growth is to, uh, to establish roots in the larger fresh soil. So when it comes to the Paulonia root system, as I say, you've got this lignotuber, which stores up all the energy. This is this section here. You can see there's a nice big thick, uh, a section of stem there basically just between the, the shoot and the uh, and the roots and that's basically the lignotuber that stores up all that energy ready for that rapid growth now part of the lignotuber's job is to make sure there's plenty of buds ready to regrow if it does get damaged and cut off at the ground level the soil level is generally about here just below the soil level that you get that swelling on the plant so looking down you can see there's a couple of buds here and here and these are basically dormant buds another one there and these are where it's going to regrow from if it does ever get cut down to the ground level. Now when it comes to regrowing, as I say, it doesn't have to be seed grown for the plant to grow really quickly after it's been pollarded. You can see these other roots are quite fat and swollen. These will also store a lot of energy. And so when it's pollarded, even if you don't have that lignotuber because it's one from a cutting, not from a seedling, it still has these large roots which store a lot of energy. So it will regrow very quickly and give you that rapid growth. So my plants, they haven't grown a huge amount for the first year. You can see they are generally quite small still. They've only grown about one foot in height. Uh, I'll show you some other ones in a minute which have been grown in worse conditions and they're still only about one foot in height. Um, so it seems what I found is these were growing really quite quick when they were young seedlings. Put lots of leaves, each leaf was getting bigger and bigger. And they grew for maybe about three or four months. And then come around July time, they stopped growing. It's now 
1st of September. Um, so it's been about a month or two now where they haven't put on any growth whatsoever, or at least not on the top half. But what they have been doing is putting lots of growth into their roots. So I think especially with the young plants, they need to get their roots established. They're putting some rapid growth when they're young and then they'll focus to growth on the roots, especially if you're in a colder climate. I think what's happened with mine is because they were growing in a conservatory, it was nice and hot, they thought that was summer. Then even though they're outside in the middle of my summer, the temperatures were only around 18 or 20 during the day, they probably thought it was autumn time. So they stopped the top growth, and they put all their energy into their root system. So although it's quite a young plant, they've got particularly large thick roots, a pretty decent root system as well. The root system was a little bigger than this. I probably broke off a few roots when I was uh, removing the soil. But you can see for such a, a young plant and such a small stem, it's got particularly good roots, uh, quite thick swollen roots as well. And this is one of my smaller plants. So I'd imagine some of the thicker stemmed ones over there and especially the one in the ground will have a much bigger root system. The one in the ground I think is going to have an incredibly large root system for the size of the plant and I think next spring it will grow really quite rapidly for all that energy that it's been storing over the winter. So what I'll do now is I'll show you some other plants which have been growing in less optimum conditions and just show you that they're a similar size. So these ones here that I've just kind of contained in this wooden section so they don't get blown over. They're exactly the same height as the other ones. They are also the same age. Now these were kept in the conservatory for too long Later in the year, my conservatory plants got really big, started casting a lot of shade, so these were very, very shaded. And I grew them in absolutely tiny pots. The pots were only about this size, really small. They were probably about four centimeter size pots. And so these were really stunted in their growth, but they still grew the same height and they still grew for about three or four months. They just had slightly smaller leaves and much weaker stems. You can see the stems here are a lot thinner, a lot weaker. Um, but it's interesting to see that they grew to exactly the same height even though they had less optimum conditions. And then going back to height wise and better conditions, my other plant which is in the ground, that as well is about the same height as these. But the stem is much thicker, leaves are much larger and you can tell by the base of them that the lignotuber is much larger than the one that's in the ground and it's had plenty of space for its roots and has also had plenty of light levels. It's put all that energy into the roots. They just don't seem to put a lot more into the height of the plant uh, in the first year seems to be more on the roots. I think it does depend a little bit on the climate. If you're in a much warmer climate, you might get much more height increase in the first year. But certainly in Scotland, if you're growing this in a cool climate and it's just a seedling, don't expect much more than a foot in the first year. If you're growing it from a cutting or if it's a young plant, it'll be quite different. But in the first year when it's establishing its roots, it certainly seems to stay quite small. Even if uh, you give it a good amount of soil, it will just grow stockier, bigger leaves, it doesn't really get that height. So that's all for this update. I'll just leave you now with my, my nicest paulonia, which is one in the ground, as I say. Isn't much taller than the others, about the same height, it just has a much thicker stem, and it's really going to take off next spring. So that's all for this update. I'll see you guys in spring, see how much these grow. What I might do with some of them is cut them back to the ground, see how they react from pollarding at such a young age. But I think they would ideally have a slightly bigger root system before I start pollarding them so that I can get that energy built up in the, in the roots and then get that really rapid growth in springtime.